Panorama TV presents Digital Photography One-on-One, -on -One, where we answer your questions. Here's your host, Mark Wallace. Hi everybody, welcome to this week's episode of Digital Photography One-on-One. -on -One. Well, we have a great question from Glenn this week. Glenn wrote in and he asked, I would like to know how to take photos of lightning. Well, Glenn, we've had actually a lot of people writing in and asking about lightning shots. Most of those are asking about how to shoot lightning at night. And so we're going to focus on shooting lightning after the sun goes down or close to sunset. Now, these tips can be used on an SLR like this one, or you can even try these out on a point and shoot camera like this. In fact, really the requirement is that you have a camera that you can control the shutter speed and you need a tripod. If you have those two things, well, you can take photos of lightning. So I'm going to walk you through eight steps on shooting lightning. Some of those won't work on a point and shoot camera and I'll point those out to you. But if you can control the shutter and you have a tripod, you have a great chance of catching some great lightning photos. All right, well, let's get started. And tip one says that you need to set your camera to manual mode. Now we're setting our camera on manual mode because we want to manually set our shutter speed and our aperture setting. Now, if you have a point and shoot camera that doesn't have manual mode, that's okay. Just make sure that you can control the shutter. So maybe put your uh, point and shoot camera on shutter priority mode. It usually has a little S or with Canon cameras, it says TV for time value. Once you do that, you can move right on to tip number two, set your shutter to 30 seconds. Now I know that seems crazy, but it's absolutely right. You need to have a shutter speed of about 30 seconds. Now we're doing that specifically for one thing, and that is we have no idea when lightning is going to strike. Now there are some fancy rigs where you can have a little sensor that detects lightning and will trigger your camera, but we want to talk about something that's a little bit more accessible to everybody. So we're assuming you don't have one of those fancy rigs. And so what we are going to do is we're going to be fishing for lightning. And so with a shutter speed of 30 seconds, what we can do is we can open up our shutter and any lightning that happens inside of that 30 seconds will be captured on our sensor and we'll have some phenomenal lightning pictures. Now the other thing that's really neat about a 30 second exposure is if you have multiple lightning strikes, all of those will be captured on your uh, sensor and it'll look like in one shot you have multiple lightning bursts and it makes the lightning photos look that much more exciting. Well, let's move on to tip number three. Set your aperture to F10. Now, F10 is sort of arbitrary. It comes from a lot of experience of me shooting lightning. And what that allows our camera to do is restrict the light that's coming into the camera. Now, remember, if you have a point and shoot camera that doesn't have an aperture setting that you can control manually, the most important thing is for you to be able to shut your shutter speed. So if you can't do this, don't worry too much about it. But on, uh, for those of you that have an SLR, try F10. And what's going to happen is you might see that your lightning is overexposed. If that's the case, then you need to choose an aperture setting that is smaller, so perhaps something like F16. And if everything is too dark, if the lightning is too dark and you're not seeing those lightning bolts, then open up your aperture setting, maybe something like F8 or even 5.6. So you need to play a little bit with your aperture setting to get it exactly right because it's really going to depend on the brightness of the lightning. But a good starting point is F10. Now tip number four, and that is to set your ISO to 100. Now I know you're thinking that's crazy because we're shooting at night, so it's everything is dark. Why wouldn't you set your ISO to something like 1600 or 800, something really high? Well, I know that we're shooting at night, but those blasts of lightning are very, very bright. They're almost like strobes, studio strobes. And so they're so bright, if you put your uh, ISO up to something like 800 or 1600, well, a couple of things would happen. With the shutter speed of 30 seconds, all of that uh, ambient light, you know, the light that's coming from the moon, the city lights, things like that, well, they're going to be overexposed. And when the lightning strikes, you're going to have an absolutely washed out image. It'll just look totally white. So make sure you keep your ISO low. I suggest 100, and some cameras will only go to 200. To get it as low as you possibly can. Well, let's look at tip number five, and that is shoot in raw mode. Now, raw mode is really going to help you out in post-production. Now, when you're taking photos of lightning at night, it's very tricky to set your color temperature correctly. In fact, a lot of times you have to set your color, uh, color temperature so low 
Um, it's lower than your camera will allow you to do that. So you can uh, take those raw photos into Photoshop or Aperture or Lightroom or Picasso or any number of applications and you can tweak those and really get some interesting effects. I like to take my color temperature really low so that my skies are nice and blue. Then I can tweak the contrast and things to really bring out the lightning strikes in my images. And shooting in raw mode will allow me to get the best effects possible. Well, number six is to set your focus to manual mode and then focus just shy of infinity. Well, now what we're doing here is on a normal lens like this, um, you have a manual and auto mode. So I'll set mine into manual focus mode. And then on the top of this lens, I have a little guide that tells me how many feet away my subject is. And so I'm going to turn this until it gets just to almost infinity and that will do a great job. Now, again, if you're shooting with a point and shoot camera, you don't really have to worry about this if you can't set it to auto uh, to a manual focus. If you can, set it to infinity or just shy of infinity. Now this is going to be really terrific for a couple of reasons. Number one, uh, you can't focus on something that your camera can't see and your camera is not going to be able to see the lightning because uh, it's not there until it actually strikes. And number two, um, you're not going to be very close, hopefully, to the lightning. And so you want to focus uh, quite a distance away. So I'm assuming you're going to be a few miles from your lightning. You don't want to get closer than that and get zapped. That wouldn't be very uh, wise. Well, let's talk about number seven. Use a wide angle lens. Now, I like to use a lens like this one. This is a Nikon 16 to 35 millimeter lens. If you have a point and shoot lens, um, a point and shoot camera, most of them have a wide angle lens. So you want to be zoomed out so you see as much as possible. With our little Lumix here, we have a 20 millimeter lens attached. So that's really, really, really nice and wide. Now, the reason that you want to use a wide angle lens is you don't know where the lightning is going to strike. So a wide angle lens allows you to see a lot of the sky. And so then you only have to point your camera in the direction of the lightning and you're going to be guaranteed to see as uh, much of that lightning as possible. So it really depends on the zoom, how close you are to the lightning. I recommend that you don't get close to lightning, shoot at least a few miles away because we don't want anybody to be zapped. It's not very wise. So use a wide angle lens, stand back, get the entire sky. And with that 30 second exposure, as you have those lightning strikes happening, you're going to get a really phenomenal shot. Well, let's look at our final tip. Number eight, put your camera on a tripod and then point it in the direction of the lightning strikes. Well, a tripod is absolutely necessary because without it, you're gonna be holding your camera with your hand and that means anything on the ground is gonna be blurry because you're not gonna be able to hold your camera steady for 30 seconds. So get a nice tripod, throw your camera on it, point your camera in the direction of the lightning strikes, push your shutter release, the camera's gonna open up for 30 seconds, and then any lightning that happens with inside that 30 seconds is gonna look terrific. Now one other little bonus tip is, if you have a, a cable release like this one, it might be able to help you out because instead of pushing your shutter on your camera, um, you can push your shutter here and you're not gonna have any camera shakes. So once you have all of that set up, the fishing can begin. So you're gonna take a shot, you're gonna wait 30 seconds, hope that lightning strikes. If it doesn't, push again, wait 30 seconds, and as you're doing that, eventually some lightning's gonna strike and you're gonna capture that. Once it does, take a look on the back of your screen, make sure that the lightning isn't too dark or too bright. If it is, then change your aperture setting and then repeat. So it's a little like uh, an adventure where you're going out there because you don't know all the different variables. The lightning might be a little bit bright, it might be a little bit dark, it might be moving, so you're gonna have to be moving your camera. So as long as you know not to get discouraged, just uh, be taking shots every 30 seconds, be tracking, making little adjustments, you will get terrific lightning shots. Well, thanks very much for the question, Glenn. I wish you the best of luck. And again, if anybody out there has questions about photography, please send me your questions at askmark at adorama.com. Thanks for joining us this week. I'll see you again next week. This episode is brought to you by Adorama TV. Visit the Adorama Learning Center where you'll find photography tips and techniques, links to the gear used in this episode, and related videos. For all the latest photography, video, and computer gear, visit Adorama.com. And the next time you're in New York City, visit our store located on 18th Street between 5th and 6th Avenue.